What's up guys, welcome to The Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing y'all four dangerous chess opening traps coming out of the Ponziani opening. What exactly is the Ponziani? Well, it starts off with a move e4, and following e5, we play knight f3, attacking that e5 pawn. And after the move knight c6, I mean, white has so many good options here. We could play bishop c4 with a Giacopiano piano or a Italian game, bishop b5 with Uwe Lopez. We could also go into the three knights variation or scotch game or scotch gambit. But all of the chess opening traps covered in this video come out of the Ponziani opening, which is the move c3, a very underrated move, which looks to support a d4 push. And now there's really two main options for black. The first being knight f6, attacking the pawn on e4, and the second being d5, trying to break this game open. Let's first go over d5 as our first trap comes out of this variation. Really, the idea behind d5 is pretty clear. I mean, if we take back on d5, the queen can simply take, and there's really no way for white to get rid of this queen anytime soon. We can't play our usual knight c3 attacking the queen and gaining a tempo because a pawn is already there, and black's simply going to continue with very aggressive attacking chess moves like bishop g4, castling queenside, bishop c5, e4 ideas. This is not pretty for white. We do not want to take this pawn, but instead play the somewhat strange looking move, queen a4. When I first saw this move, I was wondering what on earth is white doing? Usually, in chess, you don't want to play queen a4, especially coming out of an e4 and knight f3 setup, but this is actually very strong, as it pins the knight on c6 to the king on e8, and it also defends the pawn on e4. I think the best options for black are probably bishop d7 or f6, but oftentimes, black will simply take the pawn on e4, hoping that white will take back, and this is the obvious move, but then black will simply play knight f6, gaining a tempo, bishop g4, bishop c5, again, black is just simply better coming out of that variation, but we're not going to take on e4, and instead play knight takes e5, showing that d takes e4 is actually a mistake, because we now put pressure on c6 and on e4, and the only immediate move that can hold this all together is queen to d5, protecting the e4 pawn, and protecting the knight on c6. We're now going to continue by taking the pawn on c6, and the queen can't take back because we have bishop b5 pinning the queen to the king on e8, and following b takes c6, white has a much better game. I mean, look at the pawn structure here. Black has an isolated pawn on a7, double isolated pawns on c7 and c6, and we're now going to continue with bishop c4, a very active move, gaining a tempo against the queen, and against a move like queen d6, defending the pawn on c6, we're going to waste no time castling kingside, and after a move like knight f6, we have a very strong d3, followed by bishop f4 idea. What on earth am I talking about? We're going to play d3 here, and at first this may seem like a bad move, because it simply gives up a pawn, but we now can play bishop to f4. And the whole idea behind this is that we're attacking the queen, and if queen takes f4, we now take on f7 with check, and the queen on f4, we're about to win. Now we're simply up a queen for two pieces, and white has a one game. I would like to mention that after bishop f4, black doesn't actually have to take this bishop, falling into the trap, but can simply play a move like queen to d7, but against a move like queen d7 protecting the pawn on c6, we're simply going to play knight d2, bring one of our rooks to this e1 square, attack the king, this d pawn is about to fall soon, and white simply has a much better game. So that covers the move d5, in which we're going to play queen a4, attacking the knight on c6, also attacking the pawn on e5, because the knight's pinned, and also protecting that centralized pawn on e4. What about the move knight f6? What do we do now? Well, we're going to play d4, the whole purpose of playing c3. And now black has an interesting decision. Does black want to protect the pawn on e5, which we're currently attacking with a move like d6? Or does black want to go into the main line with knight takes e4? Let's first go over d6, protecting the pawn on e5. We can now play d5, forcing the knight back to a square like e7. And I personally really like this bishop g5 move, putting pressure on f6, and it seems as if black has a very cramped and uncomfortable position. It may appear as if the pawn on e4 is hanging, but if knight takes e4 is played, we now have our second chess opening trap with queen a4 attacking the king on e8 and attacking the knight on e4. We're about to win a knight, and we're simply better here. 
That covers the move d6, in which we play d5, forcing the knight back. What about knight takes e4? Well, we're still going to play d5, forcing the knight back to a square like e7, and we're then going to play knight takes e5. This is a very interesting position. I mean, we have three knights all lined up, a knight on e7, e5, and e4. And from the black perspective, this knight on e5 is very annoying. So it makes sense that black would want to get rid of it with a move like knight g6 or d6. Both of these have very fun chess opening traps. Let's first go over d6, which I run into all the time. d6 is actually a mistake. It may appear as if it's a good move just getting rid of this knight, but we now have bishop b5 check attacking the king on e8. If bishop d7, we simply take that bishop off the board and we're winning. And if c6, we take back. Now here black has a couple of different options. If black takes the knight on e5, we now have a clearly one game with c takes b7 check. We take the bishop off the board, make a queen on a8, and following knight c8, we take that knight off the board, take the queen off the board, and after king f6, it goes without saying that white has a clearly won game. Black only has three pieces left on the board, while white has only give up one knight. So here white clearly has a one game. In fact, this is resignable for black. So d takes e5 doesn't work, and if the move b takes c6, we simply take back with the knight. Knight takes c6 doesn't work because we take back with the bishop, attacking the king, the rook, and the knight on e4. So that's not a good idea for black. So the best move is queen b6. But even after this, we have a much better game with knight d4 check. And following bishop d7, we take that bishop off the board, castle king side. Now we're simply up upon plus this king on d7 is very vulnerable to attack. White has a clearly won game. So we covered the move d6, which looks good, but is obviously a mistake because of bishop b5 check. But I would say that this is probably, especially in speed chess, the move that you're going to run into the most. But what about knight to g6? This is actually black's best option, attacking the knight on e5. And now we have some good options here as white. We could take the knight or play queen e2. But after that, I really like the move bishop to d3. The whole idea is that after knight takes e5, we take the knight on e4, and white has a pretty solid game there. But here, black might be tempted to play knight takes f2, because here, after king takes f2, black can play bishop c5 check, attacking the king, followed by knight takes e5, and black has a clearly won game. But we don't have to take the knight on f2, but instead play the beautiful bishop takes g6. Amazing move. If h takes g6, we simply take the knight and we're a piece ahead. And if knight takes d1, taking our queen off the board, we now have bishop takes f7 check, followed by bishop g5 check, forcing the king to d6. And most people would probably simply take the queen on d8, but we're not going to stop. We're going to play knight to c4 check, again, forcing the king to c5. And now, yet again, we're not going to take the queen, but play knight b to a3. I really love this idea for white. And now black has an option. If black takes, for example, on g5, we have b4 checkmate, game over, 13 moves, go back, call it a night, and come back the next day. And if black sees the move, b4 checkmate, and looks to stop it with a move like a5, we can now simply take the queen. We're now ahead three points, up a piece, and on top of that, the knight on d1 is trapped. So black's best option is probably to play b5, attacking our knight, looking to free up the e3 square, but we can now simply play a move like bishop takes e7, take the knight on d1, and we're simply ahead a ton of material. This is resignable for black. If you'd like to learn the theory behind the Ponziani opening, click the video to the left. If you'd like to explore more chess openings in general, click the playlist to the right. Leave a comment to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.